got their stuff pretty much together, I'd say, on the whole. Wouldn't you? If you're confused at any time, just go Google it. We uh, we proudly support Google here at HTLA New York, and uh, you should too. But no, no, Sweden's ornithologists, okay, the the bird watchers, the lover of bird species, and indeed part of the scientific community on this our planet Earth in the age of 2015. We should be well past this kind of retardism. Oh, but I can't use that. Oh, wait. Yes, I can. I'm not in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Well, those lovely scientists and bird watchers uh, in Sweden are changing the official names of bird species now. Okay. You know, those those scientific names, those long Latin words that were just like, oh, that's the Herennius effectus or whatever the hell it is. Well, we're going to get to the vertias on that tonight. And if you need to know what that is, well, that's truth, ladies and gentlemen, in Latin. Yes. So these these fine ornithologists, these fine hmm, technologically, scientifically advanced being human beings in Sweden have decided that they have to now rename bird species for fear. And I'm, I'm quoting here. For the fear of sounding condescending... Or racist. Yeah, you, you you heard me right there. Condescending or racist. Yeah. Well, bird watching has long been a popular and seemingly harmless weekend activity in Sweden. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, but I do now. Maybe that's what PCism is all about. Getting us to know more about our planet. That could be. Well, its innocence, however, came into an abrupt end when many of the country's bird lovers were suddenly confronted with allegations of, yes, not kidding here, racism. Well, <clears throat> I guess you folks in Ferguson better start the riot train again and get some more Air Jordans and sell them on eBay because Sweden is offending the world with racism. They're just pouring out the racism uh, with their scientific bird names. Yeah. I, I, I wish, I really wish I was kidding here. Well, for centuries, yeah, it has now been revealed the Swedish had given birds names that now can be considered offensive to certain groups. One species, for example, was called the gypsy bird, whereas another was named Negro. The insult kaffir, which was used by white against blacks in South Africa. Well, let's be clear here. That was the Dutch in South Africa. Also resembled a Swedish bird species called kaffir with a K instead of a C. There were other offensive bird names in Sweden, such as Hottentot, apparently inspired by the name of the language of an indigenous Southwest African tribe called the Kihogi. <laughs> I should throw a Leo. There you go. Yet also, apparently a derogatory term for that tribe. There we go. <laughs> I hope I pronounced that correct. Lee. So for the, for the sake of this show, I'll call them the Kihogis and uh, uh, put in brackets a series of clicks. There we go. You know, for fear of being, you know, authentic and, and not uh, offensive in any way. <laughs> because, yes, ladies and gentlemen, the last thing I want to be is offensive on this show. Now, despite the prominence of bird watching, some Swedes, uh, had the existence of these names and others like them had sparkled little outrage publicly until just recently. When Sweden's Ornithog Ornithological Society completed its first ever global list of all 10,709 Swedish bird names just two weeks ago. The organization also announced at that time uh, some awkward name changes. In the process of categorizing the names, Stafford is, staffers sorry, had raised concerns over some that had a potentially offensive nature. As a result, several, several of them have now been changed. Negro, for example, uh, will now be called the Blackbird. 
Well, hey, I don't know if you're checking up lately on current events, but uh, you can't use Negro anymore. Right, fair enough. But now we're going to use Black? Uh, I thought that was one of the terms that was used uh, about black people in 1962 before Martin Luther King finished his work and had it changed to Negro. But I could be confused. What the hell do I know? I just know history. When working on this list, it became obvious that some older names no longer were, quote, appropriate. This is from a Anders Weirdheim communications officer at the Swedish Ornithological thank you, Society. Uh, they told the Washington Post this. Now, now Anders Weirdheim, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that name. Well, actually, there is Anders because weird could be misconstrued or <laughs> construed as retarded. And retarded is an outlawed word here. So we're going to have to change your name, Anders Weirdheim, uh, to, uh, of course, Anders Heim. Sorry. Oh, but wait, that's no good because the Heim, that infers the Germans, which infers the Nazis, which infers Hitler. Oh, we can't have that either. So we're just going to call you Anders. That's your politically correct new name. Suck it. Well, out of thousands of names, that were, there were only 10 which could be understood as condescending or even racist. So those were the 10 that were changed out of 10,709. My first question of the night is, how the hell is this changing our world for the better in any way, shape, or form? Do these 10 out of 10,709 bird names, uh, are people rioting in the streets globally? Uh, is, is Gandhi denouncing this as hate crimes? You know, what the F is going on here? Well, Weirdheim does not think that the bird name should be used to draw broader conclusions about the Swedish society. Out of thousands of names, there were only ten, after all, which could be understood as condescending or even racist, he said. <laughs> Nevertheless, Sweden's ornithological, or ornithological society was surprised by how serious some have taken these racism allegations. Quote, we had ex expected a few responses, but certainly not the flood of comments that followed the publication, Weirdheim said. Here in Sweden, an overwhelming majority is for the changes we have implemented. However, the news has reached far beyond our borders, and most outraged reactions have come from abroad. Mostly North America. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's that. Okay. So so now from that, okay, we're, we're, we're freaking out because there's 10 names on a list of 10,709, which if you were, you know, maybe in grade four and really immature, would pick those 10 names out of that list and go, <laughs> it's Blackbird, <laughs> it's Negro. <laughs> <clears throat> but, you know, for that to be the case, we'd have to accept that, you know, the mainstream of our society is at a grade four level. Oh, wait. Wait. Yes, of course. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So really, hey, you know, I, I keep asking this question. Who is responsible for the PC movement? Well, indeed, as we fully all know, globally, America has a real problem with education particularly in kindergarten through grade 12. Maybe education is the problem here. Maybe education is the bad guy. Is the word education now going to be whisked away by the PCers for some other word like uh, coolness or vagicil? Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> <clears throat> so moving on from, from that story, which is, you know, more uh, way more than asinine enough. Now, we're going to go into another story that's going to top that on the asinine scale. <laughs> and indeed, several other stories that will also. Uh, just, just stay tuned. Hold on to your butts. We'll be back in two after our first commercial break. And you are listening to Crash Talk with Christopher John Taylor, a.k.a. Crash Jesus, on HTLA Radio 1, New York.
what if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions, abundant with rich, fertile soil? What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended, ground, and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness, then brewed in small batches, and always served fresh within 20 minutes, just the way you like it? Now, what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons, always fresh, always great tasting coffee. I've been so inspired by being in New York because everything from what people are wearing on the street to the way they're interacting with each other to drive through the West Village at night and you see a couple kissing on the street or you see someone fighting outside their apartment or you see so much humanity on a daily basis that even if you're not inspired by your own life that day, you can be inspired by someone else's life. You got that love. There's only one place to get more Taylor. Some said the U.S. has lost its innovative power. We said America is lighting the way as the innovation nation. Singular insights, superior execution. That's the power of global connections. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Voted top global research firm, 2011, 12, and 13. When, when we, we arrived, arrived at, at our hotel, hotel in New York, York the, the porter was, was so incredibly careful, careless with, with our bags. bags. And, and the room they gave us, it was, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the, but the best worst part was, was the shower. shower. My, My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towel shower curtain. Define to find that whole, whole vacation, vacation for, her. for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. The hot new accessory, brows that wow. New from Maybelline New York, it's Brow Drama, our first sculpting ball brush with tinted gel. Just sweep, then sculpt for bolder, sculpted brows. New Brow Drama, get the look at Maybelline.com. Maybe it's Maybelline. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Well, there you go. We're back. That didn't hurt too much, did it? <laughs> well, it's 824 in the p.m. in New York City right now. You are listening to HTLA Radio 1 and New York's best talk. 24 degrees in the Central Park right now, partly cloudy. Uh, yeah. yeah, more snow for Thursday, they're saying. What are you going to do, right? This, of course, being the 24th of February, 2015. Crash Talk Tuesday to PC or not to PC? That is the question. And with the first segment of this fine show, you're probably sitting there scratching your head going, what the heck is wrong with people when it comes to 10 Swedish birds? Yeah. And if you're just joining us, you're going to want to rewind and check out the 10 Swedish birds because it's pretty asinine. If I can say ass night anymore. Well, I'm going to because that's what I do here on Crash Talk. No PC here. Uh uh-uh. uh. Next story up for bids here for a further discussion into the foray of the PC nightmare, of course, is Guy Fieri, 